when you buy a processor at retail, on the top of the heat spreader, it'll say something like Core i9. Have you ever looked on eBay and found that some of them actually say Intel Confidential? Is this an engineering sample? The answer is yes, but Intel actually has multiple levels of engineering sample. I'm going to go through them with you. What's your minimum specification? If you want an independent cloud services provider for home servers, VPNs, or clients, consider Linode and sign up today at linode.com slash techtechpotato for a free $100 60-day credit. A recent Gartner Performance report shows Linode's topology offers almost double the database performance per dollar than other public cloud services. So not all engineering samples are made equal. Uh, you may, if you follow the tech press, know that sometimes before a big launch, tech press like me, Intel will send us CPUs for our review, but they won't be the full you know, retail markings. They'll have something like a Intel Confidential listed on top, and we're told that these are as near retail as possible. These are listed as engineering samples. They're actually called qualification samples in Intel's parlance. We'll go through those stages. But the way to tell them apart is that not only do it say Intel Confidential rather than say Core i9, Core i7, but if you look underneath that, it'll have a row of five letters and numbers, or four letters and numbers, if it's an engineering sample qualification sample. We call that the S-spec, and all of Intel's confidential processors with S-spec start with Q. Now, one of the interesting things about Intel confidential processors is that if you get hold of one, technically you need to have a working relationship with Intel. You either need to be a member of the press, or you need to be one of their big OEM customers, or you need to be testing the processors for them. And you'll have an agreement that essentially says Intel can recall this processor at any time. Now, because there are so many on eBay, so many in circulation, I've never actually seen an instance where Intel's recalled a processor that it sent out for testing, unless it's one of the really, really early engineering samples. And that's because they won't have everything enabled. And so rather than have this sort of distribution of some features enabled, in engineering samples and then not in retail or vice versa or frequency differences. The main goal is that at least everything in retail should be the retail stepping or the qualification sample, whereas engineering samples, they're more for testing. And the timeline goes a little bit like this. I'm gonna take the, uh, the Skylake back in 2014, 2015 desktop platform dashboard. And on the left, you can see sort of Skylake S 4 plus two, this is their quad core with GT2 graphics. Now you have this pre ES1, ES0, you might call it, week 37. This is in middle of September in 2014. Very fast follow on is ES1. So this will be a different, essentially, silicon, not quite stepping, but change. Then you have ES2 in Q1. You have this qualification sample, which is meant to be near retail, essentially, effectively is retail. If you ever see, um, like I say, the media with these confidential CPUs, this is usually what they're getting, even though it might say ES inside CPU Z. Uh, it is actually a QS technically in Intel speak. And then we have, you know, RTS production, ready to sell type processors. These, you know, so we're going on from July ready to sell all the way back from the first silicon in the lab. So when the company announces first tape out, first silicon in the lab. They're all the way back here about 10 months earlier, or at least in Intel using Skylake in this case. We may see ES2, ES3, even ES4 for some of the processes that have been more difficult to actually make. And the difference between the between go marching on will likely be optimizations, making sure features work, and voltage and frequency. The other slight difference is that uh, these processors may not be BIOS supported by the retail BIOSes. So if you manage to pick one up on eBay for relatively cheap, or you manage to get one of the older Intel Confidential processors, they may not work with your motherboards exactly how you think. They may have lower cores. They probably definitely have lower frequency, unless you've got a qualification sample. Like I said, this is meant to be near retail. At this time, Intel is meant to have their core count their voltages, their frequencies, all fixed in the silicon. And this is where companies like you know Google and Amazon and Microsoft can make sure that their entire workload is deterministic with the right frequency, uh, the right power, and then build systems based on that. That has 
been slight differences in the past. So for example, Intel sent me this. It's a 5220R. Now I was told that this was going to be an 18 core, but I put it in and lo and behold, it's a 24 core. When I spoke to Intel about it, they said they made both versions of the 5220R, but the 24 core was ended up not going to retail, but the 18 core did. And like I say, if you're worried about Intel recalling them, it's it's technically you know like a legal gray area. It's the person who's selling them who's actually in the wrong. Whether you buy them, Intel's not really going to really, really know if you have one or not, and they're not going to necessarily recall it from you. But like I said, the only time I've ever seen uh, processors being recalled is when they're sort of that really, really early ES0, ES1 silicon. Different companies obviously do it differently. Uh, mobile processors, for example, pretty much only have one tape out, and then the second one is to go straight into products. So rather than having you know, sort of four versions of silicon, they only have two. That's because they have more strict uh, product cycles to adhere to. I've got an interview coming up with AMD's uh, Mike Clark, lead Zen architect, and he talks about the story of when they got their first A0 silicon back from Global Foundries of that verse, first Zen product. Uh, they worked out just through some initial probing that this thing was only going to work if they make it cold, you know, sub-ambient almost. So they could only do that sort of validation checking on that very first generation of silicon under cold. Uh, they fixed it for like their A0 Plus, and uh, I'll let Mike tell that story in his own words. But the whole dear idea of these processes is such that at the end of the day, you get fully functional silicon. There are things in there that might not have worked, and so they have to be fused off, or things you know end up being better than they could be than they initially were planned to be. Better bolted, better frequency, and then the fab you know gives them the expect expectation of life, of you know core count and yields and all that sort of stuff. So if you ever see Intel confidential processors, yeah, it's an engineering sample. No, it's usually a qualification sample which is near retail, but you have to make sure that the BIOS works. If that happens, if you get all that right, then it's golden. That being said, if you manage to get hold of a next generation motherboard before it gets launched and you try and buy one of these processors, uh, Intel Confidential, not the retail ones, from some sort of dodgy auction sites or auction sites that aren't ones that you typically use, just be wary of scams. So my minimum specification here is that as long as you get one that's in that qualification sample route, then it's usually all good to go. There may be a situation like this one, which actually reduces the amount of cores before it comes to retail, but hey, four extra cores. If you like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We also have now a private Discord server, and if you want access to that, become a Patreon member and it'll instantly add you as long as your emails are linked. You can join the Patreon for as little as $1.50 a month, and it all goes back into helping the channel. Thank you for your support.